Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday night lecture for tonight. So tonight we have Michael Tritola with us, who will be speaking to the topic, The Bible Exposes the Real Antichrist. Um, but to open our night, as this is a Bible address, we'll have a word of prayer, if you could all please stand. Our Father in the highest of heavens, hallowed be your name. We thank you for this wonderful day which you have given to us and for all the blessings which you give to us every day. We thank you for the time that we have now to come together around your word of truth, the Bible. We pray that you will be with our speaker as he speaks to us about how the Bible exposes the real Antichrist. We also pray that you will be, be with us as the listeners, that we may be able to take in what is being taught to us, that we may all come to a better understanding of your word. So please be with us tonight, Father, and may all that we do here be done to your honour and glory. And it is through your Son, our Lord and Saviour, and coming King, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. To introduce his talk tonight, Michael has asked that we read from 1st of John, chapter 2, verses 18 to 29. And I'll ask Roger Dowling to please come and read that for us, after which I'll ask Michael to come straight up. Thanks. Reading with you from the first letter of John, chapter 2, and commencing at verse 18. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is an antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not any man teach you but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth 
and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that every one that doeth righteousness is born of him. Well, thanks for that, Brad and Roger, and um, good evening and, and welcome again tonight. Well, tonight we're going to be having a look at, at what the Bible tells us about the Antichrist or, or who the Antichrist is. And um, hopefully by the end of tonight, we're going to get a pretty clear picture from the Bible um, about who it is and, and what we're looking for when we're looking for someone who is the Antichrist. So tonight, um, I'm going to be asking um, for your involvement. We're going to definitely um, workshop it a lot um, with you. So. I'm going to need you looking out for clues um, in the passages we turn to. Um, and if you can be confident and um, share and yell out, that would be really appreciated. And we can hopefully learn together um, and piece this up on the whiteboard as we try and discover who is the Antichrist and what we're looking for um, when, when we think about Antichrist. We're also not going to cover tonight, I guess, um, who the Antichrist is outside the Bible. We're, we're just going to stick to the Bible and hopefully keep it really clear of, of what we're actually looking for. So I guess that's, that's where we're, we're starting tonight. So what is, what is an Antichrist or, or what does it mean? Um, I guess that's a, a pretty good place to start. We, we had the word in our reading um, in 1 John 2 and uh, where is it in verse 20. 22, it's in there, um, we're taught about an antichrist. But if you turn to the Strong's Concordance, um, which is really just a, a Bible dictionary which gives you the, the Greek meaning for the word, um, it says antichrist just means against Christ. So antifreeze is um, some liquid that we'd put in to stop water from freezing. Antichrist is someone that's as antichrist. Um, they're against Christ. Um, and it also means instead of Christ as well. So it's, it's a replacement for Christ. So they're opposed to Christ or they're, they're trying to impose themselves in, um, instead of Christ or in Christ's room. Um, so that's what the Greek word means um, when we're talking about antichrist. It's someone that's opposed to Christ or trying to replace themselves um, with Jesus. So that's, that's really, I guess, breaking down the word. It's, it's not a, a super complicated word. It's just someone that's opposed to Jesus um, and, and going against what he wants um, and what he's doing. So now we know that, um, where's the, the word Antichrist appear in the Bible? Well, it's actually only in one writer, um, and two of them are in our, or sorry, three of them are in our chapter tonight in 1 John 2. But, but John is the only person that actually do, or mentions um, Antichrist in his writing. And it's not in the Gospels, it's only in his letters. So um, there's three passages that he talks about. One's in 1 John 2. Two um, that we read tonight, and that occurs three times. Um, we're going to turn to all of them to start with to sort of get us a bit of a picture of what we're looking for. The second one's in First John four, so the same same letter, just a little bit later, and then the second one's in his second letter. So we'll we'll turn them all up and and sort of not uh, note down what we're sort of looking for when we're looking for antichrist. But the word only appears in the Bible five times, so it makes it easy for us to to work out what the Bible is describing when it's talking about Antichrist. So what do we learn about the Antichrist in, in this section? Um, so from verse 18 through to 20, 27 um, in 1 John 2, what are some things we learn about the Antichrist? Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, that's a really good one. So it's not just one person, verse 18, it's many. And they were in the world Yeah, so they're already, already there. We're, we're in the first century, um, so um, already exist. And they were mixed up. Yes. Oh, helps if you spell. And more coming. Yeah, that's a good one. So they, um, yeah. Yeah, that's actually, that's a really good one. I'm glad you yelled that out because so it's um, in the last hour, isn't it? Is there any other clues? We'll just start putting some verses next to it. Light, yeah. What verse was that? 21. So it's a liar. As opposed to, to truth. So there's a fair bit of contrast there. Yep. No, no, that's perfect. What was the verse, though? I'll oh, take that one. Um, verse 19. Yeah. So that, I guess that fits with the word, isn't it? They're denying Jesus or opposed to... And that word Christ is, is Messiah or anointed. So they're, they're denying um, Jesus' origin or, or his kingship, is, aren't they? Like they're, they're denying that he's king um, and who he is. Denying his father as well. Yeah. So that's linked, isn't it? Any other ones we can find from that section? I guess the only other one um, is just in verse 18. So um, John's saying, as you've already heard. So... They've already been warned about this group of people that will be denying Jesus. Um, so it's not new information for, for the believers. Um, they've been warned about a group um, that are going to come to deny Jesus. So I've um, already heard about it. Could you also be a bit more specific with denying Jesus and saying that denying Jesus is Christ as well? Yep. Yeah, so that's not a bad list, I guess. We're, so we're looking for um, a group that the believers have already been warned about um, that, that's against God um, because it's against Jesus. So God and Jesus are linked, and if you're against one, you're against both. Um, and we're going to see that sort of aligns with Jesus' purpose. Um, it's not just one. There's many. Um, they already exist back in the first century, so just after Jesus um, has died... And, and being risen. There's more coming, so it's, it's not the end of it um, and it's all going to be over. There's, there's more to come. They originated in the, in the believers, so they started off um, in the truth, um, but they've erred from that um, and they've come out of there. We've got the time period that we're looking for, so it's, it's in the last hour, so right at the end period. Um, they're lies, they're not telling the truth, so they're opposed to that. They're denying Jesus is the anointed, and in doing that, they're also denying the Father. So that gives us a bit of a, a list. I think that's pretty good from there. 
Let's turn over a page then um, to 1 John 4, and we just want to read through from verse 1 to 6. So in 1 John 4 and verse 1, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So what are some clues um, from those six verses of, of the Antichrist? Yeah, yep. Might start up here. Um, so we've got false prophets. First one, is it? Yeah, the answer what denial is, that is that we deny that we Yep. Yep, so now it's a little bit more information. It's not just that he's anointed, that he's actually come come as a human and, and in the flesh, isn't it? Anything else we can can get from those six verses? Spirit. Yeah. Yep, yep. So they've got a bit of a platform, don't they? Oh, yep, as in they've already come. come. Flesh and they're not of God. Yeah, yep. I guess they're opposite to being of God and in the flesh. Nice. I think verse 6 is describing the spirit of Antichrist as the spirit of error. Yeah. So again, we get that contrast, don't we? It's either a spirit of God and truth or it's a spirit of Antichrist and error. Yep. Are you right if we go Antichrist equals error? Um, God equals truth. And come in the flesh is also the style of the world. Yeah. Yep. As in, yep. Yep, nice. Mm -hmm. 
I guess verse four as well, they're, they're previously warned about it as well, aren't they? So it's, they, they knew that they were coming. Um, and I think verse four as well, does it say that they've already, um, already come and are still coming as well? So that it's already in the world, so that sort of backs up what we saw in um, 1 John 2. Um, that it's already there, it's already come. So it's, it's not necessarily talking about something future. Um, it's already started really early on. Um, yes, great one. Yep. Um, instead of God. So it's in contrast to God, isn't it? Yep. Yep. That's good. So we're not looking for a small little isolated pocket, are we? Um, it's a constant thing that continues. It started early. It's going to go right through. And there's lots of, lots of them out there. Um, and it's, it's error. It's not of God. Um, so it has to be in contrast to God. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're developing a fairly decent list now, aren't we? Um, let's turn probably over another page to the second um, letter of John, and we're just going to read from verse 4 through to 11. So John says, I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth. So we get that, that buzzword there, they're walking in the truth, just as they were commanded by the Father. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing to you a new commandment, but the one that we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to the commandments. This is the commandment, just if you've heard it from the beginning, so you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting, for whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. All right, so what can we get from those seven or so, so verses to add to our list. Yep. Just the one. Ah, plural. Plural, yep, many, yep, lots of deceivers. Yep. Yeah, they've gone out into the world. So almost, yeah, they've gone out from something. Yep. Yep. Yep, so it's something that's been promoted, isn't it? Yep. So again, we get that denial of Jesus being human. Fantastic. I think that's, that's pretty good. 
Um, and I guess the, the only other thing is like they're, they're not listening to God's ways, are they, in verse 8? Um, they're not abiding in the teaching of Christ um, or God. So it's, it's contrast to what Christ spoke about um, and, and his work that he came to do, which makes sense if it's someone that's opposed to Christ or anti-Christ, um, that his teachings are, are different to what Christ spoke about, doesn't it? Fantastic. So we've, we've picked up a few times that um, this is something that already exists, that they've already heard about um, and been warned about. And I guess we, if we jump back into Matthew 24, so back in the Gospels, um, Jesus actually gives his disciples a, a warning about um, a group of people um, that were going to lead people astray. So in Matthew 24... But I guess that they're the only three passages um, and five occurrences that Antichrist is, is mentioned in the Bible. So I guess that's the list. There are some other, this passage included, um, that we're going to turn to tonight that doesn't specifically mention Antichrist. But if we have a look at the list of what we're looking for in Antichrist, hopefully that will help us to piece it together and get a bit more of an idea of, of what we're looking for when we're talking about who the Antichrist is. So in Matthew 24 and verse 11... So Jesus says, then they'll deliver you up, in verse 9, to tribulation and put you to death, and you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and the end will come. So what what does that does that fill in any any extra details about the Antichrist? Yeah. So it's a, it's a de- deliberate thing they're doing, isn't it? They're they're leading astray. Yep, so there's no law on the increase. I guess that's a link to the show. We're pretty talking similar group of people, isn't it? Um, there's a, a group that have fallen away, um, and it's these false prophets that are, that are causing that. Yeah. So pretending to be. Same Antichrist, verse one. Yep. Yeah. 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 So it affects people's faith. Um, by what they're doing. Awesome. All right. I think that's pretty good from there. So we're, we're starting to build a bit more of a, a picture. Um, they're, they're leading um, the elect or, or God's... Um, yeah, Jesus' um, believers away um, and leading them astray. If we turn to verse 24, it picks up a little bit more of this, this Antichrist, um, and it says, For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. So I guess now we're seeing that they're doing these great signs um, and things for show. Um, to to lead people away.
And, and here we're told that it's, it's false Christ as well. So it's, it's not just Antichrist. These people are pretending to, to be Christ, um, but they're not true. They're, they're instead of Christ or making them imposed instead of Christ. Um, so it's, it's a deliberate act that they're doing um, to put themselves instead of Christ. Nice. All right. So we might move on. Um, the next section we want to have a little bit of a look at is in Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 1 to 12. So I guess what we want to do here as well, similar to Matthew, there's no actual um, connection to Antichrist in, in the word itself. So as we read these 12 verses, um, listen out for some of the connections we've got on the board. I might just write false Christ on here. Um, but we want to see if we can piece some of the, the connections or things we're looking for with the Antichrist to see if this section fits in with, with what we're expecting the Antichrist to be and, and to come. So in 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 1 to 12, we read, Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for the day will not come unless the rebellion comes first. The man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things. And you know what is restraining him now, so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do, will, it will do so until he is out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing the, by the appearance of his coming. The coming one of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan, with all power and false signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception, for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and to be saved. Therefore God sends them a strong delusion, so that they may believe what is false, in order that all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. All right, so there's a fair bit to pack in in that first half of 2 Thessalonians 2. Is there any links, I guess, to what we've put on the board um, that may tie into what we're looking for when we're talking about the Antichrist? Yeah, perfect. Yep. Um, I think we've got it on the board. I guess many deceivers. Yep, that's perfect. So, yep, yep. So I've got that truth and error. Awesome. Someone who opposes and exalts himself above God. Yeah. Yep. So that again, that ties into um, I guess the error and truth in. Antichrist and God. Um, so, yes, yep. Yeah. Mm. 
That's opposite to the apostle's teaching, isn't it? Yeah, fantastic. So that's a good, good link back to Matthew, isn't it? Um, so no law. Yep, nice. I'm just putting it in brackets so we can sort of see all the links um, to it, just to, to give us a pretty big idea. It's talking about the same, same person, um, like the Antichrist in this section. Yeah. Yep. Verse was that? Fantastic. Yep, so that's that falling away, isn't it? Oh, yep, yep, sorry, yep. Yep. Yes. I think the only other one I had was verse 3 where it talks about rebellion. It, it really just means falling away. So that was similar language to um, 1 John as well. Let's go and see it on there. Yep. Yep. So he's not going to last. And I guess the other thing we saw in... First John was, um, it was in the last hour, wasn't it? And if we have a look at verse 1 um, of chapter 2 of Thessalonians, now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, um, so that's, it's talking about that last time when he's, when he's about to come, isn't it? So it's that last hour just before he comes. So the time period fits in um, as well. Um, so I guess that's verse... Um, so we, we're getting a fair few links, aren't we, to... We can sort of see that there's at least, what have we got on there? At least nine connections to what we're looking for in the Antichrist. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so I guess, yeah, and God's in control the whole way through, isn't he? That's a, a good one. Um, I guess the other one is verse 2. It talks about not being quickly shaken in mind um, or alarmed, um, and there's that spirit again. So um, it's, it's wanting people to stand store, uh, stand firm and, and not to be deceived, isn't it? So it's, it's saying be assured of what we've, we've told you and, and we've seen that's what John was warning about, like don't be deceived by what's going to come. Um, stay true to what you know. So it, it fits in fairly well with what we've been looking at. So I think that gives us a pretty, um, pretty good thing to connect it to the Antichrist in this section. So what are some new things we find out about um, this person spoken about in Thessalonians or Second Thessalonians. So we've said we're, we're looking for someone that's, that um, puts himself in God's place or proclaiming, I think someone said, proclaiming to be God. Was that earlier? Yes, please. Who 
Fantastic. So we've got someone that's, that's proclaiming to be God, sitting in God's temple, um, and is exalting themselves. So they're right up the top, aren't they? Um, and it's a singular person now. So we've sort of seen, it's, it's been talking about there's, there's many coming, but now there's this person at the top that we're looking for that's exalted, proclaiming to be God, or calling himself God, and, and sitting in God's temple. So that gives us a few clues to look out for, doesn't it? Is there anything else we can um, gain from, I guess, these 12 verses um, that link to, to who this Antichrist might be? So it's a growing, um, yep, growing movement. Yeah. Which again goes, I guess, everything against God, isn't it? God is righteous, but these people are finding pleasure in things that are against against God. Mm-hmm. So misunderstanding of the of God Jesus relationship. I think someone said it before, but um, Jesus was gonna um, Destroy him when he comes. I don't know if I actually wrote that up. Yep. And someone said it before, but I think it's, it's pretty much the key to dealing with the Antichrist, isn't it? Um, which we'll sort of finish with at the end. But just while we're here is, um, yeah, someone did say it in overcoming. Um, but these, um, they refuse to love the truth and so to be saved. Um, so I guess for us, the, the key to us overcoming the um, the Antichrist is, is to keep that love for the truth um, so that we are saved and we're not, not deceived by this um, person that's exalting themselves and, and led away with, with that movement um, that's taking over the believers. Fantastic. All right. I think that gives us a fair bit more to go on with. Um, we've got two more passages we just want to run through that just fill out a few more bits of detail. So if we turn to First Timothy 4... We're just going to be having a look at verse 1 to 4 of 1 Timothy 4. So again, this one, or this section, um, doesn't actually mention Antichrist, but listen out for, I guess, what we've got on the board so we can connect it in to just make sure it, it, it ties in with the context of, of what we're looking for when we're looking for the Antichrist. 
So in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1 to 4, we read, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Though through their insincerity of lies, whose conscience is seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the word of God and prayers. So in this section, I guess, what are some, I guess it's two that I could find that sort of link it to, to what we're talking about. Fantastic, yeah. So those deceitful spirits, again, that ties in with, with what we're looking for with the Antichrist. Yep, nice. That's... Yeah, definitely. So again, it's that falling away or that departing from, from the truth. Um, and then I guess the last one is it's, it's the latter times in verse 1 as well. So same period of time. So again, that ties in with what we're looking. So I guess that's four connections we've got to link this back to, to the Antichrist. Um, and we're sort of told a couple of interesting things here, isn't it? It's, it's a group of people that, that forbid marriage. Um, they require abstinence um, from, from foods that God's created, don't they? Um, which is, is kind of an interesting um, thing to pick up, forbidding marriage um, and requiring abstinence from certain foods. Um, And I guess we're told that it's also it's a, it's an insincere. Um, it, there's there's lies involved there as well. Um, they've got conscience that aren't truly working. They've been seared, but it's it's not actually changing who they are. Nice. The last um, passage we just want to flick through to is Second Peter two. Um, and just pair this up, and then we'll sort of run through um, where it, where it leads us to. So in 2 Peter 2, and we're just going to be reading verse 1 to 3. Again, Antichrist isn't mentioned here, so we just need to be looking or listening out for um, some clues to link us back to, to what we have on the board. But verse 1, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false prophets among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction, and many will follow their sensuality, and because of, the, because of them the way of truth will be blasphemed, and in their greed they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and the destruction is not asleep. So how, what's the context, or I guess what's the links back to what we've been looking at with Antichrist? Yeah, fantastic. So same group of people leading it, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, they're denying the master. That's in opposed to, or I guess they're putting it, yeah, rejecting who he was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that's many a fall away, isn't it, from it? Nice. So that, that links us in. Um, and I guess the, the new section in this um, is we see that it is, it's a, there's a fair bit of greed in it, isn't it? Um, in their greed, they exploit um, the people um, and it's, they exploit them with false teachings or false words. Um, what was that, sorry? Yeah. Um, so it's greed and exploitation.
Um, so we're looking for people that, I guess, um, have teachings that, that generate a fair bit of money, um, and that's how they're exploiting, exploiting the people. Um, I guess the last section here is we, we're told, verse 2, that many will follow them. Um, so it, it, as Dan said, it's, it's a growing movement. Um, it existed when in Christ's day, um, but it's going to turn to a lot of people following them. So many are going to follow um, these teachings and this, this way that's in opposed to, to Jesus. Um, so I guess the question is, who, what fits our long list um, that we've, we've compiled from those five passages? It's quite a list, isn't it? We've got to be looking for, um, for probably an, an organisation or someone that has a man up top um, that's proclaiming to be God. Um, that's, that's sitting in God's temple, um, exalted. We're looking for something that's, that's a, a religious group, isn't it? It's come from a group of believers. Um, it's come out of the first century group, um, and it started way back um, in the time of Jesus. Jesus warned his, his disciples about it um, and that it was going to come. So it has to, has to originate in religion, and it has to tie back um, in part to the first century. We're looking for a, an organisation or a group that has a, a large following. There's many people um, that are following these teachings. Um, we're looking for a group that, that has dietary requirements, that um, has celibacy, um, there's a forbidding to marriage. We're looking for a group that has a lot of money. Um, through their greed, they've exploited a lot of people with their teachings, um, and that's made them fairly rich. So I guess that doesn't give us too many options, does it? What would fit all, all of those criteria? Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good, pretty good guess, uh, or pretty good statement. Um, what, what are some things that link it to the, the Catholic Church? The government? The government, yep. So it's a lot of power. Yep. One thing I found fascinating is just the Catholic Church in Australia um, has about $30 billion worth of assets. So that's, it's not North America, it's not South America, it's not Europe, it's not the Vatican, just in Australia. And we'd probably say that they're not, not a massive group of people here um, in comparison to the whole country, but $30 billion um, is a fairly big portfolio. Um, so that's, that's just in Australia. We wouldn't be in their top anything I wouldn't have thought as far as holdings and, and size, but 30 billion um, is a lot of coin. Anything else that sort of ties it in? Yeah, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? There's not too many people that actually claim to be God, um, and yet that's, that's something that's pretty unique to the Pope. Um, and of course, he sits, sits in the Vatican um, in, a, in a temple um, devoted to God. I guess something that's pretty amazing is, is on his, um, he has the vicar of Christ. So he's, he's Christ's representative um, on earth. So he speaks for Christ, um, which they link that to, to God as well, don't they? Yeah, priests can't marry, can they? So that's, it's a pretty bizarre rule um, or requirement in the Catholic Church, but that's something that, that links it in. Um, there's a forbidding um, of marriage for, for priests. Yeah. I guess it, it, it ties back, don't they, to the first century believers, like they tie it right back to Peter. Um, so as far as timeline, it, it fits in. And we know definitely by 300 years, they're getting fairly established. So um, we can tie the roots right back to the early, early believers, which I guess for most people... Um, or most organisations don't go, if you get to 100 years, you're doing pretty good for a business, but the, the Catholic Church can tie right back um, to the first century group of believers. Um, I think something else that really um, jumped out at me is the amount of times we hear about false prophets or um, you've got the contrast of truth and error. 
Um, you've got people being deceived. Um, what else came up on there? Lies as opposed to, to the truth. Um, and if you look at through the Reformation um, and the Protestant movement that came out of the Catholic Church in 1600s, I think, or 1500s, um, something the church did was, was discourage people from reading the Bible, um, from actually finding the truth. In fact, they went to the extent that they would, they would publicly burn Bibles and take them off people and, and punish people for trying to read the Bible and actually understand what God's really doing. Um, so that was one way they, they tried to maintain power of the people. Um, was to, to not promote truth. And that's, that's pretty opposed to, to Christ. We're going to finish with uh, some words of Christ that are a direct opposite to that. Christ came to teach people his way, to teach people the truth, um, and to allow people, in fact, to encourage people to test what he said um, is what the disciples really encouraged people to do and, and to tie that back. But this organisation didn't want people to really discover what was in the Bible. Yeah, it's one of the, the largest groups in religion, isn't it? Um, the Catholic Church, right around the world. Um, you couldn't really get a bigger, bigger movement of people, could you? Um, so yeah, that's, that's a great, great connection. Yep, and it was, yeah, no. Yep, and then yeah, through Constantine, then it, then it really grew and became the, the national um, religion, and, and that's when they prospered and started to amass so well. So, yeah, I think when you start looking at that list, it, it really doesn't give you too many options of, of who the Bible is pointing towards as, as the Antichrist. Um, and they were really a law to themselves too, that, weren't they? Like they, would, they would go against Jesus' teachings to persecute people that, that didn't agree with what they they were teaching or that might have undermined their power. So they, they could write their own laws as they wanted. Awesome. All right, well, we might leave it there as far as connections. We just want to tie one thing back um, to... Oh, right. Let's just jump quickly, sorry. We'll do two things. Um, so Matthew 12. Um, this is just another, I guess, example of, of people... Um, of an antichrist, I guess, that we have. Um, and it's, it really shows that just denying the power of Jesus um, is, is that spirit of an antichrist. So in Matthew 12 and verse 22, there's this um, miracle that Jesus comes and he, and he heals this person that's demon-oppressed man who's, who's blind, he's mute, um, in verse 22. And, and he's brought to Jesus and Jesus healed him um, so that the man could see and speak. So he's blind, he's mute, Jesus now heals him and he, he can see, see and speak. And the people all around are amazed, we read in verse 23. And they actually say, can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, it, it is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this man casts out demons. And Jesus said to them that, how can Satan cast out Satan in verse 26? Um, that doesn't really make sense that I can, can make him blind and, and be working for someone to cast, cast him out um, because they're accusing him of, of Beelzebub, the prince of demons. And we um, then jump down to verse 30. Um, Jesus says, Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, um, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or the age to come. And so I guess here we see these Pharisees are really an antichrist. They're denying the power of Jesus um, and actually attributing his miracle um, and his power to, um, to Beelzebub, um, this prince of demons. And so in some ways that's that's taking power away from Christ and being, being an antichrist in that sense. Um, and I think that's something that is a bit, yeah, you can sort of tie back into the Catholic Church as well in that it takes the power away from Jesus um, and, yeah, removes that. Um, and so I guess for us the, the, the challenge is to, 
to not deny Jesus and his power. Um, we, can't, we can't fall into that trap of the Pharisees. Um, he who was the, the son of God. So what's the, the takeaway for us? Um, we've seen that um, back in 1 John 4, um, that we have to be smart, don't we? We have to be able to discern um, and find out our own way. In 1 John 4, we're told that, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Um, because there are going to be false, pro- false prophets and they're going to have false teachings. Um, and as we've seen, they can be all over the place. Um, but for us, the warning is to, to test those spirits and to really discern between truth and error. Um, that's, that's really the key of the Antichrist. We can't fall into the trap of being led away by error. Um, it's on us to, to detest each teaching um, so that we're not deceived by it. And that's something that Jesus came back in John 4, verse 6. Jesus said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. Um, so he came to show people the, the way, the truth, and the life. So he was pretty open in his mes- message. Um, he wanted people to discover him. He wanted people to read about him and know who he was so that they could find this way to life that he led to. So what is it about Jesus that, that we want to come to, um, to know? And that's really in the end of chapter 13. Um, this is the way of Jesus that we, we need to learn about and to follow um, and that we can't deviate from. Um, Jesus came to give them a new commandment. Um, and it, we read that in verse 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I love you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have loved one for another. And so if we're, we're going to be um, for Christ, it means we have to actually act on his teaching. We have to follow his, his truth to learn about him, um, but then we have to follow his way, and that will lead to life. And his way is to, to love other people and to look out for other people. And that's a sign that we're, we're in Christ, that we're following him, um, and that people can look at and know who the true Christ is um, because of our actions and the way we show that to other people. Well, thank you so much for your words to us tonight, Michael. Um, we hope that everyone has really enjoyed and has learnt a lot um, about our topic for tonight. And we ask that, well, we would invite you to come back next week where we will be having another Bible address um, by Sam Luke, who will be speaking next week on the signs of the times, which should be another really interesting talk. So after we um, conclude our meeting tonight, there will be a light supper, and if you have any questions about the talk, I'm sure you can come up and speak to Michael or any of the Christadelphians here, and we'd be happy to have a chat over a cup of tea. So we'll close tonight, um, as we started, with a prayer, if you could all please stand. Our Father in heaven, We thank you that we've been able to meet together around your word of truth tonight to learn about the Antichrist that is revealed in your word. We pray that instead of having this worldly spirit, that we may have a spirit that is of you, walking in truth and showing love one for another, knowing that your son is the Christ, our Lord and Saviour, who is soon to return to this earth. We pray that that day may come soon, Father, when every tear will be wiped away and there will be no more death, sorrow, crying or pain, when all things will be made new and when your glory will fill the earth. We also thank you for the supper which you have given to us, for the time that we have to discuss what we have learnt tonight and may the time that we spend together be used to build each other up. We pray that you will please be with us in our journeys home that we may all arrive safely. And it is through your Son, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, our coming King, we pray now. Amen. Mm